Welcome to the Dream Council Podcast. My name is Desmond De La Ghetto, and this is episode 16 of Drive Council Radio. Today we have Malik. Yeah. We have Marco Polo. Hello. And we have AGE Romance. What's up? <laughs> and today we're going to talk about Apex 2013 and SCR 2013. And again, this is episode 16 of Drive Cancel Radio, the official podcast for DreamCancel.com. All right, y'all. Welcome back, episode sixteen. This is the first podcast of the year, and um, you know, if you're listening, you know, if you play KOF, you already know that the game is back at Evo, Evo 2013. Thank goodness, hallelujah! <laughs> it's time to um, you know get hype, you know, and uh, get practicing on KOF. Um, I hope. Many people decide to uh, head to Las Vegas and uh, and play, but most importantly, hopefully, um, everybody is um, supporting their own local scenes and uh, hyping up KOF and bringing in new players as much as they can because that's going to be important for um, for Evo for you know for bringing the hype and bringing um, you know the skill that was shown that was uh, featured uh, last year because we know how hype that was. You know, I, I personally thought that. You know, it kind of was like almost the the main event of Evo 2012. So hopefully we can uh, we can do it again. But uh, right now we want to um, talk a little bit about uh, some uh, site news, and uh, not much has been going on that much with the site so far. Um, a lot of people have been joining in on the chat tango chat box that we have on the front page. So um, if you're a new player, you know just hop on in, and we have people there. Um, willing and able to help you out if you have any like KOF um, gameplay questions, you know, and uh, you know it's been you know pretty useful. I've been seeing a lot of new players coming in and out and stuff like that, asking questions, and hopefully, you know, we're able to help them out. So if you're new, don't feel shy. Come on in. You know, we uh, welcome people with open arms and stuff like that, and you know we're a friendly bunch. So don't be afraid, and also. For the people that are helping the new players in the chat room, thank you so much for being helpful because that really helps, you know, and, you know, it helps people get better and it helps people want to play because I know sometimes people kind of say like, oh, man, you know, like this game or whatever other game, you know, some people are just like real kind of like stuck up or snobby or whatever. So let's not have that for King of Fighters because I know that. King of Fighters players are real cool, real friendly. You know, I, I've kind of, um, you know, witnessed it myself and experienced it. You know, we're a cool bunch. So don't be afraid to ask questions, and uh, don't be afraid to help anyone out. So um, why don't we uh, start talking about Apex um, 2013, uh, Malik? Yeah, man, can you um, give us a little rundown on how um, the tournament was, uh, how it was ran, how things are kind of going as far as like the turnout and stuff like that if you don't mind um i think uh let's see there was about 19 people um 19 or 20 marco uh, i think you would have a better idea of that because i actually didn't get to see the official number at all so i think um, i think it was around 20 to 25 i'm not really too certain about that okay but it, was, it was still you know a decent number, you know, not bad. Mm. The only thing that was unfortunate is that, you know, it was on a Friday and many people had work and such like that. So uh, that, mm-hmm. could, that was probably one of the main reasons why there was that many numbers and everything else. 
but other than that, like, I would say 2025 at the most. Okay. Yeah, but, um, the tournament was, it was ran pretty smoothly. I, I ran extremely late, probably, like, I think three hours late or something like that, because I screwed up on some directions, like, <laughs> it, was on, it was on some anime type shit, but, um. <laughs> what date yeah, was that again? That was the... The, uh, the 10th to 13th? Hold on. 11th through the 13th. That was, that's Apex weekend. Okay. All right. Cool. And Apex is, uh, is that primarily, uh, like a Smash major or something like that? That's what I was hearing. Is, is that correct? Yeah. It's pretty much yes. like the Evo equivalent to, um, to Smash Brothers series. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. So there's a lot of Smash heads there, but it was, a, it was the tournament ran smooth and stuff. So, mm-hmm. like, if, when I got there, I had to, um, I played one match and I I got in the top eight, but oh, uh, word. I, I I got DQ'd because um I I was running late and you know I didn't I didn't want people holding the like bracket or anything like that because you know Tom is you know Tom is of the essence especially at these majors and stuff so right you got to get things done quickly as you know soon as possible so that was my fault for um showing up late even though I got I got lost. Right. Okay. I, I was just I was just happy to actually play to be honest cuz I thought I was going to get like just completely DQ'd and not play. Mhm. Cuz I was like, "Oh man, I wasted like $50 for nothing." Right. Okay. Yo, we saw um I was watching one of your matches, man, on the stream, Malik, and you were going against uh Chris G. And um yo, if if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit about like kind of um your experience like playing that match, you know, from your perspective? Well, I say I actually have a bit of history with Chris G with uh, KOF. I played him at um a Connecticut tournament once. He beat me. Um, I played him in winners finals and in grand finals, and in like in both sets he beat me three zero because mm-hmm. I was um I had like I had like really bad habits of just like jumping in during my pressure and stuff. And he really because Chris plays so like ground oriented, he really um punished me for that. And like when I, by the time I started adapting. It was too late, and I was just like, I was mind broken. Yeah, and um, it was, it was bad. But um, that the match this time, I came in like better prepared. I actually uh started playing Mr. Karate to um to counter Chris G's team and teams like that. But as you see, I didn't, I didn't pick it. I don't know why. I just I went against my instinct and pretty much I, I felt like that was the biggest mistake I made. Cause I was just like, oh, I didn't, I like, I feel like I should have toughed it out, but that was as, as you can see, a silly investment because I, I lost in the end. Right. And what what characters do you play, man? I was playing. Well, I played Billy Shin. Your not Yori, sorry, uh, Kyo and Mister Karate. Okay. So I play her now. All right. Cool. 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 Um, was there any kind of like? Um, strategy with the order that you had at all, or or do you have like a set order of the um of your characters? Um, my strategy is like, I'll I'll kind of counterpick what the other uh, opponent is playing, like their order, if it, if it's comfortable for me, if if you can understand that, like if they have like certain type of characters up front, like really good batteries or such, then I'll um I'll put the Billy up front. If it's if it's a good battery, that's not a fireball. Uh, that's not a fireball zoner. Just a fireball character. But if it's like a fireball z- uh, zoner or something like that, mm-hmm. I'll either take Billy out and put Karate in, or start Keo off if it's just one or Shin. Okay. So yeah, I have like multiple like little intricate strategies that you know that only I, I feel like that that fit me best. Right. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Um. Hmm, let me see another question. Um, how, how did you uh, prepare for um, for Apex, man? Like, how, how did you like train for it? Cause like you 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 know you went pretty pretty far, man. I mean, like you know, did you like grind pretty hard beforehand? Um, I actually kind of play I play the game semi frequently to, to um to frequently. I was just playing a little bit earlier actually, but Apex. I I wanted to play every day, you know that week. Especially because I usually do that with majors mm-hmm. coming up, but I unfortunately didn't. But I got I got enough practice. I feel like I practiced about let's see Monday. I practiced Tuesday. I played a little bit. I think I skipped Wednesday. I popped in training mode Thursday, and I played Friday. Okay. Well, obviously, because that was the day of the tournament. So. 
All right, cool, man. Um, when you're like playing on the stream at all, do you do you get nervous at all when you play? Um, actually, I I did get nervous because um I'm actually my friends always they talk about this a lot now. Uh, when I played my first match on stream against uh Midas Rage, mm -hmm. uh, in the in the first game that I won, I like I was rubbing my chest a bit. <laughs> Everyone was like, you know, like what are you doing? Like, looks silly. It's just like because I felt I was it was the adrenaline running and not only that but I was kind of I was really nervous because I just didn't want to like mess up so bad so I had to like take a deep breath and like just try to calm myself down as much as possible and that's why I was like trying to just hold my breath and just get myself together and um drink some water like I brought on stage oh word yeah that's good man um yeah calm yourself down really helps because yeah because like I get nervous okay. sometimes too you know so if I just tell myself to calm down and just relax and just think in the present, and it usually helps. Yeah, yeah, because, like, I was, because, you know, I would normally just, like, go into it, but I was like, whoa, okay, I, I should breathe, like, because it's, it's the anxiousness of, like, if, you know, making reads and just, because KOF is such a reactionary game and stuff as well, so, you know, it just, everything just, it, it, it just came together. That's why I felt like, oh god, all right, calm down before I pass out. <laughs> oh, pure adrenaline. Yeah, yeah, that adrenaline is, man, that that can, that can either like make you or break you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, it it can, cause sometimes like I be doing stuff in matches I don't even do in training mode because of the adrenaline and certain like, um, reads and and reactions and stuff. It it can be crazy, man. And at the same time, it can it can make you lose too, cause. You'll be thinking about other stuff, and you, your head won't be in a match, and you're just shaking all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling all too well. Yeah, but yo, um, Marco, man, um, yo, can you tell me a little bit about you know your experience with uh, Apex um, 2013 and KOF? Sure, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. All right, great. Um, honestly, Apex 2013. It was actually a good tournament, to be honest. Like, it was run perfectly well. Like, I went last year, I didn't enter, and it was just a mess. Like, nothing was organized, and people were waiting for, count for like, countless hours just to play a match. It was for either for Street Fighter or Marvel. This year, however, with the help of Min and Big E, everything was run fast, move, and to the point. Like, I was really surprised about that. And the overall morale of the tournament like i genuinely had a good time like seeing some familiar faces in the okl community as well as street fighter and some local friends i know in marvel so it's really good overall can't really complain and mm, i have really no complaints about it like i was genuinely shocked how great the tournament was ran mm -hmm. i'm really proud of uh biggie min and jonathan lugo the host of running apex you know for such a good tournament cool man Sounds mm -hmm. sounds good. Um, question, man. You know, you won the tournament, man. Congratulations. Thank um, you. What was your um, your whole strategy for winning the tournament? Like, how, how did you prepare? Like, what kind of training methods did you use for it? Well, when it came to, like, Apex, like, I guess I started training, oh, a week or two weeks after I was done with classes and everything else from NYU. And then I was hitting up... Malik and a bunch of our local friends like A3 Religion, Zidane, all them, and we'll we'll have gatherings like maybe once every week, once every two weeks and such, you know, just playing together and everything else, and that really helped out a lot. And when it came to, like, training and everything else, like, you know, honesty, like, the only training, I guess, when I have sessions with the guys, other than that, like, with me trying to train at home, it's really impossible because I'm always, you know, busy with Aaron, so when I get there to the actual arena and stuff like that, actual event that's when i started playing and naturally getting my mind into it i just basically pick my characters that i'm very comfortable with and just test some things out and if it works it works and if not then then i know i need to practice a little bit more what, what characters but, do you play well right now i'm playing benny mar and yuri those are my two mains that's always going to be in my team mm -hmm. and i used to play claw but i'm actually going to drop him and i'm going to pick up king i'm going to be playing king from now on oh you're going to put that's her on point i'm going to put king on on point yep <laughs> would you say romance that's exactly my team <laughs> oh great <laughs> <laughs> we have a good team yeah why, why do you um uh, marco why did you felt the need to switch to, from uh are you already king 
Well, like, Yuri and Benimaru, like, I like playing Yuri because, you know, I like the character. I like everything she does, and she's just a fun character to play as. Benimaru, like, I picked him up probably, I would probably say five, six months after the game came out, and I was just, you know, practicing everything else, and I just became fond with him, and I liked him a lot. And looking at, like, recent tournaments and everything else, Benny Morrow is my best character, so he's going to be on my team. The thing with Claw to King, now, it was a little bit concerning because with Claw, he's basically heavy damage, but he can't really do much without any meter, so I can't put him on. Like, any position would be kind of difficult because Benny, Yuri, and Claw, they're all meter dependent for higher damaging, so I need someone to gain the meter for me. And after testing everything out... I like King a lot, and I'm just focusing on practicing her and hopefully getting her to tournament level. Word. Yeah, I, I can definitely hear that, man, because, like, King, man, she's so, like, she, she's, like, a perfect, like, tournament character. I remember one of the um, commentators were saying that, and, the, yeah, she's, she's like, she's a perfect tournament character. She She's good for kind of, like, scoping out somebody's style, like, at first, you know what I'm saying? And then you can kind of annoy them a little bit, and, mm -hmm. um... You know, she doesn't use a lot, like, a meter, even though her damage is pretty low. Like, you can still, like, you know, make a, a pretty good impact, you know what I'm saying, with her. Like, it's for, for me, it's all about kind of annoying them and just kind of, like, you know, finding what kind of, like, style or approach the opponent uses and just kind of, like, exposing it with her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, man, um... Why don't we go into um, Grand Finals with uh, you and Chris G, man. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about, like, your whole thought process, you know, um, you know, when you were playing, kind of some of the things that maybe you were having trouble with or certain things that you found out in the match or what have you, if you could? Uh, sure. Like, when I was playing Chris, I started Grand Finals. I was playing with Adina, Benimaru, and Yuri. Like, I chose Athena just to test some stuff out, and I actually wanted to try and win with Athena, because no one really plays Athena that much around the area, and I just wanted to somewhat prove a point. <laughs> but then I realized after he beat me the first the first match, and then I ran it back, and then he beat me again, that's when I realized, okay, that I need to actually, sorry for my language, pick my shit. And that's <laughs> when I actually put Claw Yori back on the team, and, you know... I came back and ended up winning the tournament three two. Like I'm not going to lie to you, it was very nerve wracking. Like you're in the you're sitting in the big screen. Yeah. You basically have your friends, like my friends from obviously my hometown, New Jersey, and then I have New York and then other people just cheering you on and you have another section cheering Chris on. It was just loud and it gets you very nervous. Like right. I was nervous out of my mind. Yeah, it I'm not going to lie to you about that. It, it looked kind of <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was nervous. It like, looked I like it, like, man, because like, it, like I saw, like you know, you were doing like a lot of kind of like you weren't doing anything fancy, man. You're keeping everything solid. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like you wasn't doing anything super like, like fancy or showing off. You, you just wanted just to get things done. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like <sighs> I probably say once Chris reset it and actually played my team. I felt more comfortable, and that's when I realized, okay, then, then everything's calming down, and mm -hmm. I'm getting to the flow of things. And Chris pulled up some things that you never, you normally don't see in like many players, like raw Neo Max. But the thing is, like Chris has reactions. That's what many people don't understand. Like if he sees something, he'll react right away. He'll punish you for it. And that's one thing that many people forget about Chris. And he's very focused on saving all his meter at the end, which is something that Chris is good at, managing meter. Right. And, you know, he punished me very well, and I punished him at the end. And I guess when it came down to the last match, Benny and Benny, you know, it was nerve-wracking. <laughs> and we are going back and forth, back and forth, like, jump D, trying to get the blow in. Who's going to get the first hit? Who's going to win and everything else? And then at the very end, I realized that, you know, I have half meter, I have uh, health, and Chris had a pixel, and I knew he was trying to fish for Neil Max. And then once I saw him do like a crouch B, that's why I had to jump in because I wouldn't give him enough time. And luckily, it crossed up, and I got the win. Yeah, when but, it crossed up, man, I was so hyped, dude. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, that <laughs> like that hit!" I mean, because man, I mean, I, I shouldn't be surprised because it's jump D with Benny Marvel. You know, that thing is like miraculous. It can cross up. 
you know, a, a toothpick. You know what I'm saying? So we call it jump the god where where we play at. Oh, what? <laughs> jump the god. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, man. And you can't even like low be anti air that joint, man. From from what I've like tested out, you know, it's just it's just that good, you know. Yeah, that's not things like when you play off stream, you know, you tend to like play a lot better. You could do think a lot better, you know, focus on your moves and you'll have like people yelling at you. <laughs> you're like, OK, I'm in the game. I know what I'm going to do. I got to get the win and everything else. But when you're on the main stage, it's a whole different ball game. It's just nerve wracking. And one of the things that I learned is probably when I go on stage or whatever, I need to get headsets because I need to focus on the game uh-huh. rather than me getting nervous and doing a lot of things that I shouldn't be doing. Like, okay. I saw some of the video, the, my replay video, and I was thinking to myself, why did I do all this? Like, <laughs> that's not what I normally do, but it's the nerves that get to you. Right. And yeah. that's one of the things that I'm adjusting right now. It's great that I got the win, but at the end of the day, you know, like, I'm still not happy about my performance, and that's something I need to work on. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always kind of hard to, like, duplicate that experience, you know, when you're playing, you know, on a stage or on stream or any kind mm-hmm. of, like, match where you feel that kind of nervous energy and anxiety or whatever you can't like replicate that at home on training mode or whatever or even just playing casuals you know with your homies or whatever like you know what i'm saying well you could a little bit i mean you could pretend but like when when you're just like on the spot playing man in, in that environment like it's it almost feels like a different game you know what i'm saying because like your your mindset is different and like everything you do you know that you've done in in you know casuals like it's just like you can't really do all that you just have to just play solid you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and that's pretty much what happened at the end you know once as i mentioned once i had the reason chris resetted me i had to play solid and stick to my shit and Mm -hmm. it helped me on the end and hopefully if i go to winter brawl i could just you know step it up and do a lot better right the one of things that I don't the one of the things that I just have to say is that yeah many people are going to criticize Chris you know because he's not quote unquote a KOI player but keep in mind though at the beginning he did play he still has good fundamentals and he knows exactly what works and what doesn't work that's why many people just have this misconception about it because outside of you know playing KOF and everything else I know Chris you know personally we used to play uh, Super Street Fighter back in the day so mm-hmm. he's a good guy you know, I just think people should be should leave him alone for a change and appreciate that, you know, he's doing well. Yeah, that's one thing I've been kind of noticing, you know, for a while is that people kind of just discredit people a little too much. You know, say, oh, he don't play KOF. He playing this game. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, even like with like Justin Wong or whatever. Oh, he, he, he don't play KOF. Like he always played KOF. You know what I'm saying? From from what I've heard, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I just don't like how people kind of discredit people that are getting into the game saying that they're not KOF players, but they they main a different game, you know, even though they probably had some sort of um, background in KOF in the past. You know, I think, like, you know, we kind of have to, like, stop that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, throughout, like, SoCal, you know, even though Chris was there, I was was cheering for him. I was hoping he was doing well, you know. Mm -hmm. He's East Coast. No offense, Romance. He is East Coast. Like, I represent East Coast and support my East Coast friend, you know. And he did well. I think he got top 16, if I'm not mistaken, at SoCal. So, you know, he still knows his shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. Why don't we, um, why don't we move along to, uh, SCR 2013. Um, Romance, man. Uh, man, good to have you on the show again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, man. Can you um just tell us a little bit about um how um SCR was for you? You know how the venue was like, the turnout, the people, the players. Um, you know KOF. Okay, so what I'm gonna say for SCR is uh for King of Fighter is a tournament that do you really want to win because you know like the SoCal players uh like uh, Mark Polo say no offense. It's one of the strongest area for King of Fighters, you know, like, we have Reyno, we have uh, Mr. KOF, we have all my friends, Team Chaos, and, you know, players, are, they're really good. And then uh, we we have, uh, we had some friends from from TJ, so it was a lot of good players, and then I just 
just was trying to do my best and enjoy this game because I really love this game, you know? Right. Yeah, man, we all do as well, man. <laughs> That's why we're here, man. That's why we're playing. Um, sure. Yeah, man. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, um, well, first and foremost, like, congrats on your win. You know? Thank you. Yeah, man. We, you know, I'm talking to some, you know, first place winners here today. But, um, Romance, man, can you tell us how you um, prepare for SCR, man? Like, you know, beforehand, you know, the kind of training regimen that you, um, you know, that you used? Sure. Uh, fortunately, I have uh, Team Chaos friends in here, and then uh, Luis Cha, he's a really good uh, King of Fire player, he's my roommate, so uh, the good thing is that I don't really have to go anywhere to practice, because I just uh, tell Luis Cha, you, you, we gotta practice, we got a tournament, you know, and then uh, I was trying to play like two, three times a week, at least for like an hour with him, just to get, uh, just to get ready. And then, well, that's, that's, that's pretty much it, you know, like, just pick my characters, uh, try to do setup stuff, and then new technology, and then just practice. All right, cool, man. All right, that sounds sounds great. I mean, I know um, a lot of players that are probably listening, um, they don't have that, uh, that um, you know, that luxury of having Luis Chai as, you know, their roommate to practice with, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, some people just got to fend for themselves, but, um, it, but that's really cool. Um, why don't we, uh, talk about, um, you know, you going through, you know, the brackets, like, were there any, like, um, players that kind of gave you any trouble or challenges or, you know, or were there any kind of like interesting matches that you can think off the top of your head? Well, the, the good the good thing about the uh, organization for SoCal is that they did like uh, seats, so that way they were trying to save like the best matches to the end. And then I think I got a seat, and and then I have to play like uh, good uh, players like uh, Fixel from Norco that I I always I always when I see this this guy playing the game again, I can see like the improve. You know, like, he loves the game, he practices the game, and he's getting better and better and better. And then I think that was uh, the hardest match for my pool. But still, you know, like, for top 16, everything was crazy, man. Everything was, like, no offense, like, every player was really strong. So, that's what I'm going to say. All right, cool, man. Um, why don't we talk about, um, Grand Finals? Um, yo, I just want to let you know, man, like, Chris KOF, dude, he's, like, like, he's, like, one of my favorite players, man, like, you know, lately, like, the way he plays is, like, so clutch, you know, um, can you talk about- makes me want to play Duelon again, my goodness, it's so good. <laughs> dude, I, I, dude, Duelon gives me problems, man, <laughs> like, like, overall, but, um, yo, um, why don't we talk about- um, the grand finals between uh, you and um, Chris KOF uh, Romance, like what was like going through your head? What kind of things that you were trying to do for you can um, you know for you can win? Yeah, like um, I uh, like you know uh, Chris KOF is uh, one of my teammates from Team Chaos, mm -hmm. and we were playing like uh, two weeks before uh, Soccer Regionals, like three times a week. I was playing with him and Joshi most of the time, and then uh, I was. Playing most likely my 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 main team because uh, something that I want to say is uh, there's a lot of people that ask me, uh, Romans, what do you think about this character? Who, uh, who is this character? And then there's an advice that I want to see that I want to say is uh, people that is new in the game they should focus in like four five characters. I don't want you to people you know like oh I'm gonna pick a counter with this guy. I'm gonna pick a counter with this character. It's. I think it's not a way. Because if you play like three characters, you can like you know like discover a lot of good stuff like how to play against different characters, you know. Uh, and then about the grand finals with Chris, you know, like I was next to him and we were having a lot of fun, man. Because we were playing lately, and you know, like this is a home match romance, and I'm like, yeah, Chris, just let's do it hype, you know, like let's enjoy the game. He was like, yeah, yeah. He was so happy, and he makes me feel even more happy, you know? And then uh, when we're talking about, like, strategies, it's like his own is really good. But for me, I think his best character is, is Shen. And then uh, he has troubles against Yuri. And I'm like, 
come on, Chris, you can do this. You know, like, we were trying to enjoy the game. He was like, no, man, I cannot be doing it. Yes, you can, Chris, just, you know, like, focus. But there's something that I learned in different matches. It's like, now I can play, like, more comfortable. Like, he plays well, but he's still, like, kind of nervous. Oh. You know what I mean? And then I remember something, like, Joshi was next to us at the Grand Finals. And they put uh, the King of Fighter on the, the big screen. And then Joshi told Chris, you see, Chris, now you are in the mainstream. He was like, no, you shouldn't tell me that. You shouldn't have told me that. I'm like, why, Chris? Because he, he, he got nervous. He got a lot of nervous in tournaments. No matter who is, who is you know, like the opening, he got nervous in tournaments, like really nervous. So, and then, so you think he has a little stage fright? Yeah, that's, that's something like. He's been working on it, like, he got nervous. And then, I don't know if you guys uh, noticed or if you guys knew that when he won the Norco Regional, he got into losers by crazy. Because, uh, like uh, Marco said, he has a good reaction. He knows what he's doing. He's not like, oh, how can I get beat by this guy? He don't know the game. But his reaction, his fundamentals, they're really good, man. And then that's what I'm going to say. Like, Chris got nervous. Like, that's the way he plays. But he's been learning. He's been working on it. All right. Cool. Very, very cool, man. Um, so, yeah, again, uh, congrats. Um, this uh, SCR wasn't your first major, right? No, it wasn't. It, it was, uh, you were there, remember, in Chicago, uh, UFTGA. Oh, yeah, 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 man. Oh yeah, dude, that was that was a good tournament, man. You you still got that um that gauntlet, right? Yeah, I have it in my power. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. That's that's very cool, man. Yeah, that was a that was a fun tournament, man. Um, there's gonna be another one, man. Uh, UFGT nine. Are you thinking about going up there or any of you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. I just talked to my uh, sponsor, and they're looking forward to send me to uh, Noka Regionals, and then uh, I guess after that, uh, the UFGA is coming, right? Yeah, um, is it is it May, right? Yeah, I think UFGT is before um, NorCal Regionals, actually. I think, cause um, I don't. No, 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 no. it's in April. It's, no, it's, yeah, cause uh, my bad. NorCal Regionals is in April. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. his name is in May. Okay, yeah, UFGT nine, y'all. Um, Road to Evo tournament in Chicago. I'm gonna be there. Romance is gonna be there. Sure. <laughs> Good shit. Yeah, man. Um. So, uh, let's see. What else can we uh, chop it up about? Why don't we just um, go through some of these little questions that I've gathered, and then okay. uh, we'll do shout-outs afterwards. So, Sounds um, good. All right, let's see. All right, here's the first question. All right, and then all of y'all can, like, answer this, you know, in um, succession or whatever. Um, who are some unappreciated, hidden gem slept on characters in KOF 13 and why so um, Malik you know um, would you like to answer this one first me um yeah actually I think Diamond is a very slept on character that's uh he's a I, I personally think he's cheap but you know <laughs> cause I, I remember I remember the first um everyone remembers the, um like the first month or so when Diamond had the like the real like the easiest 100% with five bars and stuff, you know, and everyone's figuring out the meta game and stuff. Even though the game is still, you know, it's developed to the way the state it is now, I still think Diamond is like a very good character that more people should be playing. Okay. He's got an invincible uh, roll into a command grab, and he can uh, combo his shorts into command grabs. Yo. And not only that, but his buttons are, are pretty good too, so. Right. Yo, it kind of seemed like people were kind of like, um, Discovering more about him and picking him more than Clark, right? Yeah, nah, he. I would definitely say he's better than Clark. Okay. Yeah, do any. I, I play Clark, so. <laughs> any y'all agree with that? That um. I'm agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I agree too. Okay. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Marco, man. Um, what do you think are some like slept on characters, man? In uh, 13, you you mentioned a little bit about Athena. You do you think she's in that category? I'll probably say Athena. The only reason because the only thing that she lacks is the fact that she doesn't really have that much good corner combos or mid screen. She's basically all about zoning and everything else. But the good thing is that um, 
One of the many people don't like to utilize is that her EX uh, dash she has, that's a good mix of potential. Like, once you get the knockdown, you can mix it up. Like, like say, for example, two crouch shorts and then, like, a standing C, and then you can EX to the side, and then it's a little mix-up because it's so fast, where are you going to block? Oh, kind of like some Dulon kind of kind of Yeah, kind of like some Dulon type of tech and everything else. And... I think her DP is really good and her zoning game is amazing. But when it comes to a really slept on character, I'm going to say Rio. I'm going to say Rio's really slept on. Like, he could cancel anything. Like, a sweep, cancelable. Like, I think it's like forward B or. Yeah, forward B. The, the parry? Yeah. Like, not many people. And he hits like a truck. And, like, if you do like a standing D and then you do the fireball, like, it just moves a lot forward. Like, it's really good pressure. And I think he has a really good solid. Really good, solid overall character. Like I think with like three or four meters HD, that's a hundred percent kill. Right, but, wh but why do you think people, people don't play with them though? Like you know, if he's, you know, if he has those qualities, is it is it probably his mobility is lacking or something? Like what what do you think? I think most likely it's just mobility and the fact that his jumping CD is not really that great. But he has some other other tools that he could utilize and that can make him an effective character his ground game is probably i say one of the best right now like it's a lot of things you can really do and many people just don't realize that they just focus on the simple things but if you take time playing with rio you wouldn't be surprised he's really good in my opinion all right cool man all right mm -hmm. thanks for your input um romance uh is there any uh slept on unappreciated um characters in 13 you feel uh, I think it'll be at um, Leona and Mai. About uh, Mai, she has a really good folks, a really good normal. She's really fast, like really, really fast. And his jump CD, I think it's one of the best. One of the, I can see that it can be a jump CD chance. Like, you know, the, she's really fast. Her damage is not the best, but she has another tools. To the, a lot of people those and really like to discover, you know, like, because I see a lot of new players, they pick, like, Mr. Karabi right away. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's because it uh, seems like a different game. Some people say he's, like, he's for Marvel or <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, that's true, like, Mr. Karabi is from what I think is the best uh, point character. It's really good damage. He's not a... Uh, meter the bender he got a lot of meter but like my i think she's one a good character but people doesn't want to play her and leona as well she has a uh, good good tools like you know like jump the overhead into super like one she has you in the corner she can you know like easily do like down b down b hd or jump the super again you know like when i play leona and I'm on the corner, I'm like, shit, what should I do now? You know, like, she can do low B, she can jump the overhead. Mm. She's a really good character. And he's, actually, he's really good damage, too. Right. Yeah, her her sweep is pretty uh nice, too, right? Really nice, really fast. Yeah, because, like, it's hard to even, like, punish that on block. It pushes her back so much, you know what I'm saying? And, like, it, it even comes out at a nice, like, speed, too, you know? Like, it's it's a, it's a really good sweep. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then there's something that I want to say, like, for all the new players, like, no matter who character you guys think is better, but if you want to play a character that you really like, just give him a shot. Give him a shot, and, you know, like, no matter if you lose, if you're losing, you're getting better. That's, that's what it means. If you're losing, you're getting better. Just remember, always try to learn in every single loss, you know? Oh, yeah, man, I could say amen to that because yeah sometimes people just focus too much on the actual loss the outcome than the actual like match itself you know so. yeah you gotta you gotta know your character and then something really good like i've been uh reading a drink from drink cancel as the the frame data that helps you a lot when you have a you know like some troubles against characters you see why you cannot punish or what you think cannot punish and just make sure that there's no punish for it. But if there's any punish, just go for it. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, I think 
pretty soon we might have uh, Andy's frame data up from uh, Keikaku's site. So um, yeah, be on a look at look out for that, y'all. Um, uh, let's see. Next question. Um, uh, I think we probably touched a little bit on this um, earlier, but someone asks, "How do you do meter management in a match? Like, how, like, do you save meters? Do you um, blow meters whenever you get them? Like, do you like save specific meters for a specific combo, or do you keep them for your defense options? Like, what do each y'all like do for like meter management in a match? Like, how do y'all like?" like conserve y'all stocks or use them um malik um yeah wh what do you think about that man like how, how do you like do your like meter management when you play like what's the strategy for you oh uh, for me well i'm a very uh I'm an aggressive player but more recently i've been um trying to switch to the defensive style and like utilize certain things like uh our cancel roll and stuff like that so you know as to you know refresh myself that i have all these options so if I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed, you know, there's a way out. But um, most of the time for me, I'm I'm really good at freestyling situations. So it all depends for me on the situation. Like if I feel like um, if I get a hit, in if I get a hit and land like a big combo, you know, I'll um I'll ride momentum off of that. And then if I get another hit, I'll probably blow meter to you know to to push for the um for the advantage because not only am I that type of player, but because, you know, I want to end the round quick and try to regain as much life back as fast as possible. I'm not saying I don't use it really for defense, but for me it's mostly offensive purposes. And I only really save it once I feel like I'm at, um like, 60-something percent drive or, like, or more. And if I'm about to, like, touch someone and, like, you know, do a very damaging hyperdrive combo. All right, all right, cool, man. Um... Marco Polo, man, uh, what about you? How do you um, approach meter management when playing? Like, for the most part, for me, I like to be more offensive. But at the same time, depending on the situation, I tend to be more defensive. Like, if I, if I see an opponent just try to jump in and be aggressive without thinking, I'm just going to DP. And it normally works, you know, because I time it right, I'll dash DP or whatever, or if they're just blocking a lot, I'll command grab. But when I'm in a corner and everything else, like, I save my meter and I'll block until I see, like, my guard meter going down. And then that's when I have to either do a blowback or try to do a guard cancel to the side just to readjust and, you know, reset my mind and think about what's the next approach I'm going to take. But with the characters that I had when I played, like, say, in Grand Finals, like, Iori, Yuri, and Benny, it really didn't matter. As long as I had, like, a full HD and everything else and I activated it, then that's fine for me and everything else. But if I know I'm low on meter and, every and somewhat, I'm just going to play the defensive game and just take the hit and try to get the meter back. But meter management is very important, and that's something that I think people should take into consideration when it comes to it. All right, cool, man. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, romance man. Um, what, what's your whole strategies for um, meter management when, when you're playing a match? That's a good question, man. Well, I'm gonna talk like uh, with my team. I play king as point because the way I see it is like she doesn't really like need like a lot of meters to be annoying and get a good damage. Like what I see with her is like she's annoying. She's getting meter. And she's doing good pressure. And then I play uh, Benny Mao as a uh, second character or Wa, because I know they can do a really good damage with just one meter, one drive. You know what I mean? Like, now I have a meter, I have a drive, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do like 50% damage. And then I do a, uh, I play a uh, jury as anchor, because I know if I have the HD, the whole drive, I'm gonna just looking forward for a down B or a dive kick, you know? And then I'm gonna do a really good damage. So I want people to know like, they gotta play their characters like the best way to go. And then uh, when I'm uh, under pressure, I don't really guard cancel, but I lately I've been discovering like new stuff like there's some characters that are, they're really aggressive and then the most important thing you gotta respect that 
you really got to respect that. You know, like, when I play against, like, Mr. Karate, like, EX Yuri, like, their offensive is really good. And you got to respect that. You're, you're not just going to DP or do crazy stuff because you don't want to block. You know, like, some people have troubles against King, and they're like, Roma, you play King. How do I play against King? And I'm like, there's two main things. You got to respect, like, her stand B and stand C. Because if you're just jumping in, jumping in, she's just going to say, stand C, stand C. Or low B, low B. That low B is really fast, like, two frames, I guess. And then if people, players, do not respect that, if they don't respect that, you know, like, they're going to get hit by, hit by, hit by. So you got to respect, like, every single ability of the character you're playing, I'm sorry, against. So that way you can, you know, like, make a, a strategy to play against them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then what I do, like, with Benimaru, I'm trying to get, like, at least two meters. And then HD, if I can land it at the beginning of every single match, I'm just go for it right away. Because I know I'm going to have time to get a HD for Yuri again. If not, I'm just trying to, like, save uh, half dry, half meters, and then do as much as I can. But I, most likely, I always try to Yuri get, like, her HD. No matter what happened, I try to save that for her. Right, okay. Um kind of a spin-off question is that like like you mentioned that you know you want to get you know at least you know for your second character you know um one bar you know uh one drive with 50 percent health do all y'all kind of like have like certain little combos that y'all know that will do certain damage within a certain amount of bars or whatever like for me for example like i try my best to learn like HD combos that have at least two or three bars that do at least like 50 to 70 percent damage or something like that you know what I'm saying just in case I, you know if I you know I'm not gonna have like five bars at the you know at the end of the uh, match do, do y'all kind of like do that same kind of uh like you know measurement as far as like meters with like HD yeah for sure that's smart man that's smart that's what we have to do Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do. Definitely. <clears throat> all right, cool. All right, let's go to the next question. Um, all right, let's see. Um, I'm, I might have to paraphrase this question a little bit. Um, so, um, what should a new person do as far as learning a new character, and when should they make that switch to that? specific character you know what i'm saying like maybe if you know they're they're picking up you know a new character when should they like switch to that character and hmm, the way that question is kind of worded I, i'm not sure what they mean like like switch to a position or something like that but um well, well let's just break it down like what do y'all do as far as like a, a new character like what should a new person like look look out for because i know sometimes new players you know oh we got to do the combos you know we got to find some combos like what should a new player try to understand about a, a new character you know if they, if they want to add them to their team or if they're building a team um malik what you um what you think about that uh i would say uh as a new player because this is my first kof as well so i can give some insight on that um I was kind of looking for the same thing, two combos and all that, but that's that's not the right thing you want to do. You want to you want to first of all test your character's buttons to see, you know, if if they're to your liking or not. You know, like the buttons should feel natural. They should feel natural, and then you know the um, the additional tool set, which are the special moves, is you know. And I feel like as long as you have those, you can you can learn a, a bread and butter or two, and just build up from build up experience from learning your character from that you don't don't just go into learning the fancy combos and stuff immediately just look for efficiency and results and you know because you're, obviously you're going to lose when you're when you're trying to get a new character but as long as it's to your liking and it fits you feel you feel that it fits you then then stick with it otherwise you know you like if you're new you're starting off you can always go to another character go to training mode press some buttons you know, just just jump around with them a bit too, because you know characters have different weight. So, you know, all all of, all of those those little things that people really don't recognize, it it 
plays a big factor, believe it or not. So by buttons you mean uh, normals, right? Yes. No. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> anime, uh, anime talk. Oh no, no, it's, it's cool. I I knew what you meant. I just um you know just for some people you know um some people don't don't use don't say buttons and some people don't say normals. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's cool, man. Um, Marco, man, what what do you think, man? What what should a player um do to try to you know understand you know um a new character that they're um trying to play with? Me personally, I would just recommend just. Well, for me, like when Kill of Thirteen came out, like I just saw the character and I just played the character that I found look cool. Like Kula, for example, I thought she was cool looking, you know, with like the costume four all red and stuff. I was like, wow, she looks pretty nasty, pretty awesome. So I figured, why the hell not? No, honestly, that that's how I played Kula. Like that's how I picked her out, and you know, playing her. Like I did her mission, and after that, I just played arcade mode just to practice my hit confirms and everything else and then uh, once i figured out cool i was like great i need to figure out two other people to play on this team and then after soul searching i guess in the beginning i played Dulon and vice and then i was like yeah this i'm not feeling these two and then i played claw yori i was like yeah i like him and then i played a damn like i like her too and then i played benny i'm like yeah that's my guy <laughs> and i stuck with benny and then i dropped all of them i'm like great and then i went back to uh the drawing board and then that's when i was like you know what let me try out yuri and at first like it it was hard for me to play yuri because like to do her drive cancel like you had to buffer it so i was like oh great like every single time i'll do like dp try to buffer her demon flip always got like her fireball i'm like what the hell am i doing uh... and then after practicing i was like you know what she takes a lot of work and i like that and i just stuck playing yuri and i just like playing the character and then since then i'm just been playing just Benny Mario Yuri and now King. Like my recommendation, like if you like a character, just go for it and take time to learn the character. Like you'll find out a lot of crazy stuff and a lot of resets and mix up potentials. Like I don't think any character in this game is bad. I think every character have has high potential. Like I remember no one played Rio and at MLG we saw Rayna play Rio and everyone's thinking to themselves, Oh my god, Rio can do that? Like, no one takes the time to actually sit down and discover all this new tech. Like, it's possible. You just have to sit back and play your character, play your shit, sorry about my language, and just work with it. And that's how I see it. <laughs> that's right, cool. true. Just don't, don't drop the character if you're having a hard, uh, hard time. Just like Marco said, if you like it, just work for it. Mm-hmm. Like, I still play Kula on and off, you know, like, I think if anyone saw, like, Kumati videos and, like, local battle videos, like, I played Kula for a long time because I liked the character and everything else. And I never switched her, and then I made a decision to play Yuri because I was going to the lab and I thought to myself, hey, she's a great character. I like <laughs> playing her. Why not? And it, it takes a lot of work. I'm not going to be the easy person to say oh yuri's an easy character to learn no it takes a lot of practice to get everything right like it's not easy to play yuri mm -hmm. it's not easy to play benny morrow like you have like for benny morrow if you want to practice his corner combos like ray jake and loops you have to sit down on training mode and learn everything mm -hmm. you have to learn everything like his mid screen game how to zone and damaging corner combos and activating his hd it's hard <laughs> Like, it's really hard. Like, two crouch crouch Bs into a standing B and then HD activation, that's not easy. It takes a lot of work, but if you like the character so much, it'll be worth it in the end. Like, the reward will be worth it. And that's how I think That's how I think any person should play. That's how it should be. That's how I see it. Right. All right, cool, man. Yeah, very, very cool, man. Um, Romance, man, you have anything else to add? Um, uh um, on that kind of subject of a new player learning a, a new character, what they should do, what they should not do? Yeah, uh, there's another recommendation that I want to say. Like, people people have uh, troubles against uh, certain characters. And then there's something I think is really good. is like, play the character or mess around with them in practice mode with the character you're having troubles with. And that's a really good option. So now you can see... Like, how fast is a move, you know, like, how negative you are after a move, you know, stuff like that. It's something that I want to add. Like, people, if you have uh, troubles with certain characters, go to training mode. Maybe, you know, like, play them and casuals, and then you will find a lot of stuff that you don't know. 
Another thing is, another thing that I used to do just to learn like character norms and everything else, just play a character and go to survival mode. Like you played the whole entire cast in KOF, like all the characters. You get to see exactly what can be punishable and what cannot. Just play something very hard and you'll be surprised. You'll learn a lot. <laughs> With no knowledge, like you just play throughout the whole survival mode. Play, and you play all the cast and you will learn, you know, exactly what to do what you shouldn't do and it does help yeah another thing is like when you're training with a uh, characters and then like you're like okay now i can do the combos but i need people to play with it's not like the best but i think it's a good idea it's just go to like arcade mode and then you get a meters fast and then you can try you know like your combos i know it's the you know like it's the arcade it's not like some someone else but at least you can, you know, like land. You can try to do your combos, and then when the real match is coming, yeah, you can, you, you know, like you have like practice. Oh, he confirmed practice, yeah, That's with the true. computer, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, yeah, because yeah, I mean the computer, like yeah, they're, they're they they were never like, you know, very smart. You know, it's a it's yeah. a computer, but you know, at least you can like you know practice how to you know land you know the combo or whatever, or sometimes like. They may spam a certain move, and you could try to just find a you know a way around it. Like one thing, but just, yeah. Go ahead. Just just be careful, cause the uh, arcade they just like uh uh right uh start new max. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say that, dude. I was gonna say that. Like with uh, Terry, if you go to practice <laughs> mode and you set on all the bars, like. Right when you press start, super, boom, 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 boom super, boom. And I, I started practicing how to, like, get around it because they spam it so much. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, can this go through that? Can this go through that? And super, boom, 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 you know, hit it, and stuff like that. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes you can, um, you know, let the computer spam stuff and you can try to find your way around certain moves. But, yeah, I mean, and then, you know, if you want it more precise and then use, um, you know the the record mode so yeah I, I agree with that most definitely but um yeah um so let's um let's close things out here um why don't we just give a little shout outs man um you know to some some people that are probably listening um malik why don't you uh start first with some shout outs uh i want to give some special shout outs to was it jonathan lugo the guy that ran apex and stuff i appreciate you um having apex i mean oh sorry kof at apex <laughs> It was um, it was a really great tournament experience, and you know, I'm looking forward to it next year. Hopefully, we can get more people on the East Coast that um that play KOF to attend. You know, I understand everyone's busy with work Friday and all that, but it was it was really a great tournament. Like, I feel like everyone should have made it out and stuff. I was I wasn't here for last year's, but this year I can definitely say, even me showing up and almost not being able to play, I still would have went a whole day just because. The atmosphere was that great, and the tournament experience was just fun. And uh, other shout-outs to, you know, East Coast, KOF players, KOF players worldwide. I hope everyone continues to keep playing this game. New players, you know, if you guys have trouble, just just ask around and stuff because no one's going to just hold out information. We want you guys to play this game more. And um, I guess that's it because I've given other shout-outs. <laughs> so, yes. All right. Cool, man. Marco Polo, man. Shout outs. Shout outs to Jersey, because that's where I'm from. <laughs> but on the real, like, shout outs again to John DeLugo for hosting such a great tournament. Hopefully, I'll see you again in 2014. Shout outs to my family in New York, like, you know, Malik, A3 Religion, Zidane, Zach, and everybody else who I forgot. And, um,. Shout out to Chris G, good guy, and West Coast, and shout out to you guys for having me here. Thank you. Cool, man. Um, romance, shout outs. Yeah, shout outs to all my friends from Team Chaos. Shout outs to all the people that I met on the Road to Evil tournaments, and they're still playing the game. Uh, shout outs to Dream Council to have me here again. You know, like, pretty much uh, shout outs to Mexico, the people that they were supporting me at the tournament. And then, that's pretty much it. Shout out to everyone who loves Kino Fighter. Oh, and one thing. Shout out to Peru for winning the Chile tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to tell you. That's true, that's true, Michael. <laughs> shout out to Nick Kane Blue River. Such a good guy. Shout out to you, man. Yo, is there, is there, is there videos 
<laughs> yeah, there's a there's a video. Shout out to James uh, that's from Peru, Peruvian guy. He won the 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 tournament against uh, Matarato. I played at Evo with him after uh, at, at, at the pools, King of Fighter pools. He's really good, and he lost the grand finals against, against James. And then I think we're gonna have uh, James at Evo because they won a ticket from a uh, plane ticket and all that stuff for Evo. And shout out to Kimberly River, he won the marble. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm at the. He's a good guy. I like Kane a lot. Word. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check out those videos, man. They sound very, very interesting. Cool, man. Uh, my shout outs, man. I mean, y'all everybody know everybody. You know, shout outs to everybody on Dream Castle. Shout outs to people on Short Yukin or Rochinaji. Shout outs to everybody on the um the little Facebook group, the <laughs> KF13 Tournament Players Group. Uh, man, shout outs to uh, you know the. The very few people I play with in Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the um, players uh, up in Chicago. Um, man, uh, whew, shout out to y'all, man. Thank y'all for being on this show, man. Um, this is some good information. That is very, very good. You know, thanks always. And the congrats again to the to the winners of uh, Apex 2013 and SCR. And um, I just want everybody to know um, if you have any um, other... Um, or if you have any ideas for any kind of um, concepts or show topics for Drive Cancel Radio, just let us know. I might make a thread, um, you know, for any kind of like, uh, you know, ideas for people to, co you know, could post up stuff. And, um, you know, I just want to just keep things going in, in this kind of direction as far as, uh, you know, gameplay discussion because, you know, everybody, um, you know, that's new to the game or is more of like a media player, you know, needs some sort of help. And, uh, you know, everybody wants to improve. So, uh, yeah, let's just, uh, let's keep things going. And, uh, this is, um, episode 16 of Drive Council Radio, the official podcast of DreamCouncil.com. I am Desmond Daylight Ghetto, and I want to wish everybody, um, peace and blessings. And, uh, we'll catch y'all next time. Take care, you guys. I'll see, see you guys, guys around. Everybody have a good one. <laughs>